All right, so this week on the mini guitar lesson, I thought we would continue our exploration of chords and chord shapes, different chord voicings, this week by looking at those elusive creatures, sus chords. You may know how to play some of these chords. You may also have even seen these in tablatures or in written music, but you may not know exactly what it means. Have you ever seen something that says something like C sus or C S U S four or C S U S two? That's what we're gonna cover today. So what does a sus chord mean? Let me turn down the volume on the RG here. Uh, what a sus chord means basically is that you're taking your third, which is kind of your tonal center of your chord. It's not your root, but it's what gives it its flavor of major and minor. And you're replacing that with one of a couple of different options or a couple of different notes. So now, uh, if you've viewed the previous uh, Everything Guitar videos and or some of the mini lessons that I post individually, you'll know what I mean by a third. I'll go ahead and put a link up here to the Building Major Triads episode. That way you can get a little bit more of an idea of what a third is and what a triad is. So it'll make a little bit more sense when we're talking about getting rid of the third today. So let's start out by taking a look at a C chord. A C major chord we build this way. I'm sure you're familiar with this. It is built with the notes C, E, G. And then we've got an octave C higher and an octave E higher. So that is our C major chord. Now in that chord, our third is gonna be the third note in the scale. If C is our roots, our one, then we start counting up. We covered this last week when we were talking about some additional chord theory as well. If our C is our root, is our one, then we need to go up the alphabet to find our third. So D would be our two, we're going straight the alphabet, and E would be our three. So our E is this guy, our middle finger, second fret on the fourth string. So that's our third. We've got our root C, our third, and our fifth G. Root three, five, C, E, G. So to make this a suspended chord, what we do is we get rid of that third, that E, and we're gonna replace it with one of two different things. There's a sus two chord, which isn't as common, meaning that we replace our third or our E with a two or whatever the second is in this key. So in this case, remember we just said C is root, that's one. So the next one up alphabetically, the two would be a D. So to make a C sus two, we take that E, our third, and we lift that middle finger and play the open D string, which is giving us our second. So a C sus two then is going to sound like this. Just playing the triad, the three notes would be that C, D, G. And we add in that octave there. So that's a C sus two. We're replacing our third with a second. There's also what's called a, a sus four chord, which as you may guess, means we're taking our third and we're replacing it with the fourth. So remember once again on our building chords knowledge, if C is our first or our one, D is our two or our second, as we just learned, E is our three or our third. So F would be our four or our fourth. So since we're in C, and I did this one specifically to keep it easy, our fourth would be an F. So what we would do is we take our second fret middle finger, which is that guy, and we would raise it one half a step or one fret to get an F. So then that means our chord becomes this guy, C, F, G, and then C octave. And we could bar down the first fret on this first string to get another F an octave higher. So then we would have a chord, and I'm gonna change my fingering like this. So C sus four, C, and C sus two. You hear that tonality there where we got that dun, dun. a little bit different flavor. C major is kind of a happy sounding chord. Put that sus two in there, makes it sound a little bit pensive. Still sounds kind of happy, but a little bit different kind of happy. And we put that sus four in there, that F. Three 
three different tonalities, very easy to modify that chord to give us something different, something unique and unusual. So let's take a look now at another example for that. Let's take a look at G. So a G chord, as you may recall, if you don't, you can go by all the way back to, I believe it was episode, let's see, one, two, I believe it's episode four of Everything Guitar. I'll put the link up here once again. A G chord, remember, is made, the G major triad is made of a G, a B, and a D. Our G, third fret, sixth string, middle finger. A B, fifth fret, second string, first finger. D, fourth string, open, no fingers. And then we just start repeating. So we've got a B then, our open third string. We've got a, pardon me, a G, our open third string. We've got a B, our open second string. And then we've got pinky, third fret, first string, and octave G. So that's our standard G major. Our triad, once again, one, three, five, is G, B, and D. So taking what we just learned with the C major and extrapolating that, we would need to find our third. And to make it a sus2, we need to lower it down to the next note down to the second note in sequence, correct? So where'd we say our third was? If G's our first, we'd have A would be two, B would be our three. So where's our B? That's our second fret, fifth string, our first finger there. So if we want to make that a sus2, we lift that first finger. Hear the difference there? a sus4, same thing we just did with our C, we need to take our third, our B, and we need to raise it up to our fourth, which in this case would be a C. So, the easy way to play that, how I was playing in the intro, you can do it a couple different ways. You can just slide up that second finger from fret two to fret three, play it like this. that intro I was playing at the start of this video. That's how you can start using sus chords to build some movement and some interest into your chord progressions and into your songs without having to do a huge amount of movement or without having to go crazy and throw chords in that are out of the key or jumping all over the fretboard. Although that's cool, that's a little more advanced. So let's take a look at that piece I was playing right at the intro. We're starting out with a G major. I've got it fretted a little different. I have middle finger on the, the second fret of the fifth string, ring finger on the third fret of the sixth string, and pinky down on the third fret of the first string again. So that gives us our G major. So then I was going up from a G major to a G sus four, so I'm sliding up that, that second finger, and I'm also taking this open B string, second string, and I'm fretting uh, fret number one with my index finger, which is a C, so that gives us an octave of our fourth. So we're going, G major, G sus4. Then we've got D sus4, which is our D major, only instead of having the F sharp for our third, we have a G for our third. So D sus4, D. Or D major, remember we learned a long time ago if we just call it by its root note, that means it's a major chord. So if we were playing a D minor, we'd call it D minor. So D sus4, D, D sus2, opening up that first string to be an open E, so it's our second in the scale, then back to D, and then back down to G major, G sus4. So what I did is I walked up the root note, C, C sus4, then back to G, G sus4, then back to D sus4, D, G, G 
process for G. So I encourage you to play around with that idea, and it doesn't just have to be obviously those two chords or those three chords. Any chord is made up, a major chord is made up of a root, a third, and a fifth. So to make it into a suspended chord or a sus chord, what you're doing what the sus means, I should have covered that earlier uh, a few minutes ago, means that you're suspending the third. And if it just says sus, if it says like C sus, usually the common vernacular means that you're using a sus four. So if you see C sus with a dial and number on it, that usually means you're doing a sus four. So you're adding in that F into a C chord. If you see sus two, it means you're adding in your second instead of your third. So for that C, you're getting rid of that E and you're replacing it with your second or your D. So just real quick review to help out remembering that if you haven't seen the previous episodes of Everything Guitar or the mini lessons. Our notes in the scale start out with our root being the one and they climb up from there. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then they repeat because there are seven notes in Western music not including sharps or flats. So if we're in C, C would be our one, D would be our two, E would be our three, F would be our four, G would be our five, A would be our six, B would be our seven. Uh, same thing in G, G would be one, A would be two, B would be three, C would be four, D would be five, E would be six, and F would be seven. So hopefully that's helpful. Hopefully you incorporate some sus chords in your playing and in your chord progression just to give it a little more movement and a little more interest. Make sure to tune in next week where we continue to dive further into chord theory and we'll look at some extended chords next week where we start adding some upper voicings. These may be things you've seen in print, although you may not know what they are, including things that say stuff like C add 9 or C 11 or C add 13 or something like that. That may sound a little weird because we just talked about their seven notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, A through G. So what in the world is a 13? Tune in next week and you'll find out.